Hello and welcome to a short tutorial on how to manage rubrics using Sheet Creator. So I have the Sheet Creator instructions open and I'm ready to follow them. It says, I recommend creating a folder called Rubrics for Project in your Google Drive. So there it is. Okay, done. Do not begin this process if you have not written the rubric. Okay, I have it written so I'm ready to go. Noticing the difference between the icon for the spreadsheet and the icon for the form. That's good to know. So open Sheet Creator version 2 spreadsheet and then make a copy. So file, make a copy, and then rename it. So this will be called Rubric for Scale Project Period 1. Okay, I don't need the template open anymore, so I'm going to close it. Then go back to the instructions real quick here. It says rename the copy with the project name and class period. Move the copy to your Rubrics folder. So I click on the folder icon. And I choose the Rubrics for Scale project and click Move. Now I know where it is. Good. So then create your rubric form. So open the spreadsheet. I've got that open. So click on the Form menu and choose Edit Form. Notice that it's not a good name. It's Copy of Sheet Creator and Sheet Creator V2. We need to change both of those so there's no confusion later. So then I go in and I add all the evaluation items that I need. Um, I, I like to make all of my questions required so that students cannot submit the form until they have actually answered all of the questions. Okay, again, this is an example, so I'm not going to do a lot of questions. It's not necessary for this. So I have that finished. Excellent. Coming back here, it says make sure that everything, oops, do not delete or change the order of the first two questions. I didn't. Add the questions I wanted. Change the name in the form of the form and the document title. Okay, did that. And make sure that everything is correct. So I have to make sure that I don't have anything wrong here. Everything's good. So, great. It says copy the spreadsheet for the other classes. So I go back to my rubrics folder. Okay, and there's rubric for scale project one. Cool. So I right click and I choose make a copy. The reason I'm creating the copy this way rather than from here is that it will automatically add spreadsheet in this folder. It makes it a little easier later. I, there's a little less moving things around. Change the name of it for project for period two. Make a copy. Right click rename. So now that I have created that, so you should have all the spreadsheets for one, all of your classes in the rubrics folder, you will only see one form at this point. Do I see a form? No, that's because it's still in here and the other forms that got made because of the copying process are also here. So I'm going to select all these and I'm going to put them into my folder so that everything is in one place. It will make it easier later on. Okay, so create and edit forms. So open one of the spreadsheets. So I'm going to open the Rubric for Scale Project 2 spreadsheet. And I'm going to go to the Form menu, Edit Form. Okay, I'm going to make sure that these names make sense. So Scale Project Rubric P2 is what I want. And this should be Rubric scale project P2 as well. So the only thing I really need to edit because all the questions are the same from class period to class period is the name of the person I'm evaluating. I have a file here called class lists and this is period two. Yes, period two. So I go to my class list, I copy my list and I paste it into here. If you if students are evaluating themselves and you do not want that grade to count toward their final grade, then add a self option in the list. If they choose themselves to evaluate and they choose, if Mary's evaluating Mary, then Mary's data will go into her, her sheet. So name of person you are evaluating, include a self option if you do not want to include 
student's evaluation of themselves in their final grade. Under your name, I invite you to include a teacher option so that you can see how you graded it. You could also just use your first and last name or your name as well. So there's period two all ready to go. So I'll close that. Now here in period one, I still also need to include my class list. So I'm going to Okay, so that's period one. All the title and the name are good. So I'm going to close that. I don't need it. And then we'll come back here to rubrics for scale project and do the period three one. Period three spreadsheet. Form, edit form. Okay, again, this one says P1 on it. We don't want to confuse students. This is actually the one for period three. So, all right. So now I have all my forms ready. What do I do next? Create and edit the forms, rename and change the title. We did that. Okay, so create sheets. You can wait to run the script until after you have collected responses. But for demonstration purposes, it makes a lot of sense for me to do this right now. So open the spreadsheet for one of the classes. So we're going to look at period three, my biggest class here. And it says click on the class tab, class list tab. If you do this part from the form responses tab, it just will not work and you'll have to start over on a new spreadsheet because it won't be worth it to fix it. Okay, so here you have an example of what this will look like when it's finished. Notice that the names in column B end up in the formula in column G. What I need to do, I need to paste your class list into column B. And it says C notes. So this is um, section 7C. The note for 7C is the names must be exactly the same as the names you pasted into the first question of the form. So if you have John C. Smith in the form, and on the spreadsheet you paste in John Smith, the query will not work. Okay, That's why adding that extra option of self won't bring that, that option into the responses at the end when, you, when you're evaluating the data. Okay, So class list, here we are, P3, copying those names and pasting them in column B. Okay, notice that right away column E changed with those names. And if I scroll over here, column G has also changed. Do not edit anything in these in columns D through G. In my instructions, then it also says, let me go back up to the right area, we were at 7D. Delete event imported from column C when it occurs in the same row as a student's name. So right here, Sally, Regina, Caesar. Morgan and Bill, they're all there. I'm going to delete event imported from there. I want to keep the event imported um, information in column C where there is not a student name in the same row. Okay. Otherwise, you'll end up with a lot more spreadsheets than or a lot more sheets than you really want. Okay. So then I click on the scripts menu. Scripts, create sheets, app needs authorization to run, so OK, accept, and then I do it again, create sheets, and now there we go, we have a sheet, a tab for each of my students in that class. You'll also notice that when you click on here, there is an error message, but um, we're not going to fix that right now. Because later on, when after you have received some form responses, that's when we'll go and we'll fix that so that this query will then bring all of Bill's information into Bill's sheet, all of Morgan's information into Morgan's sheet, etc. All right, I'll demo that one more time. So I'll open up class period two's rubric. Period two's class list. I'm going to go to the class list tab. I'm going to paste the names. 
And again, you do not want a, a header here. You don't want it to say class names. You just want to start with the names. I delete where it says event imported next to a student's name. And notice again that E and G have updated. Create sheets under scripts. Provide it the authorization it needs to run. And then create sheets. Again, creating all the sheets for each student. Very simple. All right, so then you need to ask students to respond to your form. So if I go to the form menu and I say go to live form, which this is on the instructions at number eight, okay, um, I can copy this link and email it. I can put it on my um, website or I could put it on a uh, Google Classroom, share that link with students somehow so that they know that this is the link to the period two project rubric. Okay. So after you've, I'm, so right now I'm going to actually pretend to respond to this. I am going to pause the, the recording for a minute and I'm going to enter some fake responses. Okay, so here in period two, I have some responses. They're not awesome responses because I just kind of did some random entries. Um, you can see that Peggy has definitely get been evaluated, so let's go look at her tab. Ideally, all of Peggy's information would be right here, but it's not. The reason is, I don't know, but the, what we need to do is we need to just copy and paste this query and it should work just fine. So, we will highlight and select all of that information, use Command C, and then Command V in cell A2, and then everything works. Again, I don't know why it doesn't work just when it's pasted in there through the, um, the script, but it isn't really that difficult to, to copy and paste it so that it does work. So um, I'm pretty sure Sally had some responses as well, so we'll copy this again, copy. I use the escape key on my keyboard so that I can then select cell A2 and then paste. And there it is. So now you can see that Sally did not follow the rules in selecting herself so that her information did come onto the page, okay? Students who do select self so here for Mary, we can do an experiment with Mary. Mary, by choosing self, her information does not come up. In the Peggy uh, data, we can see that Sally actually entered her comments and information twice. I'm afraid I don't have a way of catching that right now, so you do have to be a little bit on the lookout. More than likely, those would happen as one row after the other. So you would be able to catch that a little more easily. Okay. Um, I think Lindsay had some responses as well. Just to show that one more time, I select everything there and then I paste it in and there it is. Very, very simple once you have the bulk of the work done from this. Okay, it's not the perfect solution, but I think it is faster than gathering all of the information in one sheet and then having to filter out the, the person who's being evaluated and, and copy their information to another tab or, or another spreadsheet and evaluate it that way. Thanks for watching.